So what exactly is the difference between a super cardioid microphone and a standard cardioid mic? Today we're going to answer that question and take a look at the Shure Beta 27. The Shure Beta 27 is a super cardioid large diaphragm condenser microphone. It features a three-way switchable high-pass filter and a switchable 0 to 15 decibel pad. Weighing in at around 428 grams, it's not the lightest thing in the world by any means, but with that comes durability and stability, and when you pick it up, it feels quality, it feels well made. But the big question, what is the difference between a super cardioid like this and a standard cardioid mic? Well, the answer is actually fairly simple. Basically, a super cardioid microphone has a tighter acceptance angle uh, meaning it has a narrower pickup field. This in turn offers more side rejection than a normal cardioid mic and a more focused recording. This is often the preferred choice for live performances, for live singers, as it helps to cut out all the noise going on around it, and also for weaker singers, as it has that more focused pickup field. It is, however, worth bearing in mind that because of that narrower pickup field, and I think a, a super cardioid comes in at around 110 degrees, when a standard cardioid is about 130, because of that narrower pickup field, um, it's a lot easier to, to go outside it and, and lose your signal. So when using a super cardioid mic, it's important to remember to stay directly in line with it. Another thing about super cardioid mic which is worth bearing in mind is that it does have a little sensitive spot around the back, whereas a standard cardioid mic um, has complete rejection going on apart from that 130 degree pickup field, a super cardioid mic does have that little soft spot um, where it will pick up some sound. So it's worth bearing that in mind when placing monitors. We've been using this in the studio for about six months now to mic up amps and cabs mainly, a couple of acoustics. Uh, but what I really like about it is it seems to hit that perfect sweet spot between bass and treble. Um, the EQ on it really, the natural EQ on it really is, is exactly where you want it to be. I'll whack all the details up on screen now so you can see all the fine details about the microphone. It comes in this um, rather nifty little leather, pleather, I'm not quite sure, um, a zipped uh, case, which is always really handy. And it comes with a uh, microphone stand attachment as well, which is um, super good because it's always nice to have somewhere safe to store your microphones. So I thought it was important to show you exactly what the Beta 27 sounds like for vocal. Um, and this is what it sounds like. As I've already mentioned, we use it a lot for guitar cabs and guitar amps. But it can be used as a vocal mic, obviously. Um, and this is what it sounds like, and I think it sounds pretty great. If you are gonna use it as a vocal mic, it's probably worth getting a pop shield, which is uh, something that sits in front of the microphone, uh, between you and the microphone, and prevents all those pops and cracks. To find out more info about all the pop shields we sell, just visit www.gak.co.uk. As I said, for amps and cabs, it really is the perfect sweet spot for me. It really gives a nice sound. We haven't used it much for vocals. Hopefully you can hear from the demo we did in this video that it can be used for vocals and it does sound good. Um, but let me know what you think. You know, have you used one? Do you have one? Do your friends have one? I'd really like to know in the comments what you think about this. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, then hit that little like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you very soon. Tiny little bonus fact. Cardioid microphones are called cardioid microphones because the shape of the polar pattern that it makes is that of, very similar to that of a heart. And obviously heart, cardio, cardioid, who knew?